I'm Jonathan Byer. Hello. Hello, and welcome to our recap of the Russian Junior Figure Skating Championships. We're also going to preview Four Continents a little bit and talk about some other random Russian things. There was an interview with Volkov, <laughs> and we're going to talk about some other little Terry Juniors in Ice Age, which happened a couple of months ago, but we never talked about it. So it felt like a good time to put it all nice in there. Nice tie-up. Yeah. And we're going to talk about your girl, Camelia Valieva, who everyone wanted to know what hap what Jonathan thought of her with this short program representing the Picasso painting. And that's when he conveniently had the flu when all hell broke loose in skating in like a relatively <laughs> short period of time. So Yes, yes. See yeah. what my absence can do. That was inappropriate. Okay. Um, so I did watch... Oh, wait, wait, wait. This... I'm not done with my intros just oh, yet. Oh, excuse me, Dave. Please blurb away. <laughs> Give us if the If you are new here or you're not subscribed, please hit subscribe below. I was getting messages from lovely people who were like, well, I'm not on social media. But we got so many wonderful messages of support. And I don't think I've thanked everyone for that. That really it's, it's been pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. It's been incredible. And I've tried to write back as many people as I can. No. Um, but it's been very nice. If you did message me during initial periods, I may not have written back to everyone. There was a lot. No, yes, that. exactly. Wasn't yes. a good time. Um, also, um, I forgot. I don't know. I put this on the website, but if you like to listen to this on audio, I have been putting the audio files on Patreon so that you can listen to it when you're at the gym and people seem to like that. So I'll continue doing it. And um, yeah, you can sign up and I put the link in the description below. Jonathan, what did you watch? Let's hear it. Um. So, okay. There... Everyone said, go watch this. Camila Valieva. Yes, go watch this Picasso program. And I thought, what a fascinating concept. Like, a Picasso program makes me uh, remember uh, Katya and Sergei's Rodin program. Like, I mm -hmm. think these kinds of visual art tributes are really cool concepts. Mm -hmm. So I still await a program that has anything to do with Picasso <laughs> because, also unfortunately... I found the opening pose. Yes, I get it. Um, the costume reference for me um, would be like if I was doing an American Gothic program in a sequence studded pair of overalls. Like, I think that I, I again, I understood the, the concept of the costume being like the painting. Um, I just thought the execution of it cheapened the idea. And to me, and we'll talk about this because this is the Atiri Danny G special where they bookend. Yes. Where, where we are told four seconds of a story and we will revisit those four seconds of the story at the very end of the program. Done often, and, very frequently. Done, and this even more clearly so, you know, by like going back into the painting um, but all I saw, first of all, I mean, I'd have to look up the historical content of, I mean, I know it's blue period and amazing for me, that painting is sad. Let me look at, okay. So it's the painting, the girl on I, the I, ball, by the way, sometimes the painting is called the girl on a ball, a girl on the ball. I mean, I mean clearly it's probably a translation. It's in Picasso. It's well, and also because it's Spanish, the blue whatever. period. Yeah, she's in blue um, in the blue period and all this Spanish, kind of Spanish, by the way. I just said he was Italian. People are going to be like, you idiot, by the way. <laughs> and also, he was accused of stealing paintings. You know, there was a whole scandal about it. It's There's fun stuff to explore. How many Picasso paintings do you really know, Jonathan? Like, how many are you like, oh, yes, that famous Picasso? Well, you know several with the moving faces. You know, of course, Guernica and like you all the... You know when you um, see it, you know. Yeah, you know it when you see it. Guernica? It's a, well, Didn't he do a Guernica yeah. that we talked about in Spanish class? That's absolutely right. What it was, don't really remember, by the way. It was a Amazing. long time ago. <laughs> oh, he did, he did a Don Quixote. That's now really... I read that book. Can I just tell you? Never <laughs> loved Don Quixote in high school. <laughs> it was a long read. It was a long read. <laughs> so I couldn't, because of my schedule with Honors Music, we couldn't do AP Spanish 5. So I took regular Spanish 5. It was after lunch, senior year. We'd like go home, watch an episode of Friends, drive back. Take Spanish. We read Don Quixote. I was checked out. Can I just tell you, it was not the hardest see, class. See, I was an AP German five. Isn't that horrifying? The stoners I... took German in my school. Just saying. Oh. <laughs> just saying. Well, what I will say is when you, every time you had to do like a presentation on something, I just chose East German and German skaters. They <laughs> I had no idea. Our class, the Katarina documentary that talked about her alongside Nadia Komenich. And I was like, 
this is my presentation in German. And I did the little blurb. And then I was like, let's just roll the tape. And then I sat down. It was pretty amazing. See, we didn't have the option for that. If we could have had like a honors German, I would have taken it. But you know, like when you're so competitive with the GPA and everything. I understand. I understand. You were going for all the points. <laughs> yes. And like Erica Rosenfeld sat next to me in like almost every class. So like, of course, I knew what she got on everything and I knew what I got. And like, you know, I was competitive about it. Anyway. <laughs> you would have been in a teary pupil then in high school. Then she dated my yeah. friend, Tom Carson, who like, you know, I was like gay and like obviously secretly crushing on him. And then she dated him and I was already, we were already in competitiveness. So, you know, that was a big <laughs> thing. But now Tom married my friend Claire, who like I was her prom date. Claire liked me and I was clearly gay. Anyway, you just got like a way more that you knew about my life. And if anyone could have followed that, you'd be like... Probably well, I'm just intrigued what that, like, those great people that do the timestamps, I'm really intrigued what that minute is labeled. <laughs> <laughs> they are going to be like, wait, what? <laughs> Dave's social high school family tree. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Meanwhile. It's, it's meanwhile. But the more, at the end of the day, I think the concept sounded so much cooler than they were able to execute it. Um, she, she had good extension, like the skater herself. Beautiful. I, yeah. And, um... It was still a little cluttery, and so I was unsure of what journey we went on. Um, but the girl looks like in the photo, and I would have to reread what the actual historical context is, or what the context of the painting is. But it looks like a, to me, a lecherous man staring at a young girl. And so, um, to me, I see Awkward. sadness in her. Yeah. So that was a weird choice to me, but I could be. So, and then another one, it says it's a young acrobat on a ball, but then other says girl on a ball, all the different websites, you know, you can't trust the internet. Well, and sometimes they don't even title them and then it's just curators describing them. You know what I so, mean? So, like, the year 1905 saw the final collapse of the blue palette in Picasso's work as the grays and then warm reds were gradually allowed to seep back into the range during the year. I don't like modern art. Can I just tell you? Because oh, I do. I think it's Picasso just looks like a people. big old mess. Let me tell you, I'm not into it. <laughs> but, he was the first one to be a big old mess, so he gets innovation points. Let me tell you, if you were my friend back when I went to Amsterdam for my 21st birthday, Dave had a real good time and bought Van Gogh prints for everyone because we had, <laughs> we had okay. the space cake before we went there. It was a great time. Anyway. Okay, okay. We're in those kinds of moods for this episode, Dave. <laughs> my favorite Van Gogh painting that was in my room, I was really into the crows that were in the cornfield, by the way. That was mm. over my bed in college. So, okay. Very sophisticated, my senior year. Dark, dark, sinister. <laughs> it's in a dark period. Yeah, okay. We've gone into that a little bit. Um, so, okay. In this painting, the pinky tones of the rose period are apparent, though the chilling gray of the acrobat's bodysuit strangely arrests the young girl's fluid animation. Her lithe, rounded motions, echoing the shape of the ball, are in obvious opposition with the square muscular form of the man whose shape is interrelated with the solid cubed seat. Like the mother and child maternity, the strong upward angular lines are whatever. Okay, let me tell you. It just seems in a, we were talking about like appropriate music for juniors, less appropriate music for juniors, lest we ever forget the girl who skated to. <laughs> Big spender. Yes. She doesn't pop her cork. Who was, that was Trusova? Trusova, yes. Trusova, Oh, so me. they said like fun and optimism is like juxtaposed with melancholia and social alienation is going on in this picture. I too. see social, I see the social alienation in the photo. And I was like, why would you give a girl that? And also um, the painting is full of round things. And she was so angular in her opening post. You know, the Russians like to feel very deep and say that this is the Russian soul. Which I love it. Yes. I, I love the idea of let's take a painting that comes to life. I think that is incredible. There's a whole Kurt Weill um, musical about it. I'm a stranger here myself. It's a big song of a statue coming to life and then going back. It's like, that would be so cool. But I didn't, unfortunately, see that executed here. So I like a lot of parts of this program. And we I love her actual extension is to die yeah. for. I notice that there are a lot of great... Actually, her transition into the triple flip is really cool in the beginning. And she changes direction uh, with her steps with and the back extension of her le free leg, which makes it really effective as she goes in and she knows how to hit the pose. There are just points that I wish that she held moves longer and allowed herself to have the moment 
And I think sometimes in Russian choreography, especially the Atari choreography, they try to get, and even my coach would try to do this, like they try to get every step in to be impressive, but I would rather see fewer and see them done with quality. Just yes. because sometimes they seem like they are skating through the music and through the movement rather than creating. And sometimes they create the actual steps and put them over the music. It's why they don't necessarily, it's not, the program isn't always choreographed to the highs and lows as literally as American programs tend to be. Yeah. That's just or like we set. would like them to be. Yeah. As a Japanese program. But that's not everyone. Marina obviously was like very literal with Moonlight Sonata and how she did it. And it's just like a different style with different choreographers. Right. Um, it does it does seem in those moments that one ignores and just does the sequence and then you're you're like okay I will be back with you in a moment. Yeah. But the other thing she's doing cuz she does have this great extension and it's clear and we'll talk about this as we talk about some of the other girls. Mm -hmm. It's clear that there is an effort. Feedback has been given and they have received it. That yes. they want um prettier positions, more but so what I see is and she's the perfect example. She may hit a thing, but it reminds me of her getting into position and hitting a position. And you see it as not holding it. And I think it could also be viewed as there's no motivation behind it. And I don't mean that in just a cheesy, what does the movement mean to you? But like, where does it come from? And like, have it be its own thing versus now I do this pretty movement I can do. And and it further sort of emphasizes the idea that perhaps a story is not being told as much as we've been told it is. Right. And also it's to the Spiegel music. So that's a little bit of an interesting... Sparse. Yeah. yeah. Pairing. Um, it works. We, I like the overall program. Actually, it's a Terry's favorite short. I actually like it compared to many of the other shorts. Also, it's a new short. So... For me, you know, I wasn't watching it in September, so I appreciate um, the freshness. I think it's interesting is that um, there are actually other coaches that are in a Terry's group that we don't see very often. And if you watch some of the junior videos, and I went back and was really studying all of the ones that she has coming up because we're going to talk about them in this. I think it's really interesting. There's another coach, Sergei Razanov, who seems to be working with some of the I don't even know what to call them, like what the distinctions are, because I would say that the juniors in a Terry, I would say like you've got Zagitova and Zagitova and Medvedeva were kind of contemporaries. Beneath them, you had Trusova, um, you had Kosternaya and Shevakova. And yeah. last year we had Tarakanova and Panenkova. And I would say like Surskaya was like a year older with Zagitova, right? This is like the next crop, and that's why I made you watch this girl and Daria Usha, Usasheva, and um, there was another girl, Maria Kromik. I don't know how to say her last name. It's a weird translation. Now, now where are you putting uh, Zenya Sinitsina in, in that mix? Is she in a she was, the, she was the fourth place girl you loved so much. Oh, oh I, I thought you were speaking generation. No, no, no. I'm talking like the Atari generations. Exclusively the Atari generations. Okay. The Atari generations. Um, so this is like the next crop and these girls are probably going to graduate to the junior Grand Prix next year when the others graduate to the senior Grand Prix. So Camila Valieva, um, Daria Usasheva, and maybe Maria Kromik, although I don't think she looks as good as the other two girls. Um, I think that those two are really going to be the ones and you could tell Terry and, and Danny G are like really watching them and like Danny G doesn't even like seem like that much of the nice coach anymore he actually seems like he's becoming the male Atari with some of these girls and he's kind of the spokesperson now of the group also okay. he and Atari and Atari's daughter were vacationing together all very curious now that like I'm I'm following this story as I think we all okay are. we're all kind okay. of but Sergey Rosanov also Jonathan not bad on the eyes so if anyone knows is he a, like a jump technician because one thing that I notice is that the um, Usasheva and Camila Valieva um, both are kind of like they look taller than the other girls. Like they have they have longer limbs and they have different kind of bodies. They seem to have more ballet training than the other girls and more extension. So it seems like they're trying to improve each generation. I just noticed their positions and they both do the Yulia Bielman where we go straight like way past the Bielman position and we're just doing like the straight back because we like can we yeah. can and we want to be rhythmic gymnasts on ice and it's very impressive makes me feel for their backs but I do love watching it uh at the same time so I would love to see Camelia like 
hold her movements just a little bit more. And I think and she that could, to me is age it, because yeah. it, the the idea that the positions are pretty when she gets to them mm -hmm. to me is already a bit of a change because before when we would talk about um, former skaters that would come out of the camp, it would be like they were attempting to reach the pretty position and not quite get there. Yeah. So now I see girls like her are getting there. Yes. Now they just need to learn to hold and do something with it once it's there. But you I think that, that their jumps are bigger too with the, the younger ones have a little bit of a different jump technique. They still do the backspin, but they're like the sow cow on Usasheva is enormous. Did you notice yeah, it, it looked leggier. And I yeah. would think like, I am sure they are not immune to seeing what everyone sees. You and know? they know and what people are saying. They have But to. you're not going to address this crop. You're going to notice it as it now comes up. So yeah. it seems like um, more effort is being given for the sustainability of it. But I also thought we're also seeing like, like girls like Camila, especially right at that prim, mm -hmm. like that primo sweet spot between her technique and her age. Yes. Like there is something like, that guilty pleasure, like guilt of like yeah. loving what the seeming precision and excitement of all of those, because actually when you get to Sherbakova and Trusova, like to me, sometimes they're pushing past yes. a comfortable limit, even though they're still And we'll doing talk about it. that when we get to them. Yes. Yeah. And, and, but right now these girls seem to be like hitting a sweet spot. I'm wondering which ones are going to be the ones that they're priming for the Olympics. Is it going to be Trusova? and Sherbakova and Kosternaya, or is it going to be Usasheva and Kamila Valjeva? Because it's probably going to be one of those two groups, and it'll be very interesting to see how they develop and what right. happens. Also, will they all stay there? Obviously, I can't foresee the everyone. They also, like Ateri, you have to, like they kick people out of the rink regularly, like on the reg. Um, they also have their pick of the litter of like all the girls. You notice like the girls get prettier and prettier. <laughs> and like they like literally like I think like she really. And are, and are maybe coming to them more refined. They can yes. maybe now have the luxury of deciding. And they may be getting better coaches at the ground level. You know, um, I believe Lipnitskaya came later to a Terry, even though she had a very similar technique. Medvedev was there even longer than Yulia. Now some of them are coming later, you know, Kostranaya, Trusova. And that was people were saying is that Volkov worked with Trusova. I don't know if that's entirely correct. I don't know her full history. Um, but there was just a lot of talk about the interview that he gave and the different motivations that are going on. Because Terry is getting more backlash within Russia from people that normally wouldn't have such a problem and they were saying that it's as political as anything else like it may not be the same reason that you take issue like they may just be jumping on the bandwagon okay okay yeah. um i'm trying to look up if <laughs> so she was with alexander volkov that is for truth of us so they said that like he apparently gave her a lot of her quads like they've she's been doing them for a while so interesting i don't know who did what when, you know, we've seen oh, that. Right. Otherwise. I feel like every coach will say it was all yes. them. So it's and on said, both sides. Yeah. So it said that she moved to Terry's group in 2016. So we didn't see the quads until 2017. Who knows what the truth is. But anyway, what did you think of that article by Volkov? I mean, what were the most shocking parts to you? I, at first I was mm -hmm. trying to... So the first thing that he said that I was a good point was when they said, is her school the best in the world? And he said he wouldn't say the best because her masters and he means her master of sports, which is the Russian title for the athlete classification system. He said that they leave her. And he said after a 13 to 15 year old child, what's next? Polina Shelepen, Yulia Benitskaya, Polina Surskaya, Evgenia Medvedeva, Dora Benenkova, um, they all leave her. And he said that he doesn't know why they leave her, but there has to be a reason. Well, obviously that is true um i also think that she's kind of changing the sport in a way where people yeah. are peaking and maybe will peak with these big tricks at a very primal age it's becoming very similar to gymnastics so i mean but i have to say like i don't ever remember even in like my boom years in the mid 90s of following the quan era skating mm -hmm. i don't even know that i was that into the junior circuit then no. But but she she has almost single handedly forced us to be a little bit more in tune to the junior, you know, Grand Prix circuit and things like that. 
Well, she's um, used the points to her advantage. I mean, it seems like she, in the way Nina Mosier is, is like the overseeing coach and the pusher, and she scores them, and the organizer. Well, but that she, was the thing. Because is Sergei behind some of the technical things that yes, we see? Yes, is that actually, And, and Danny yeah. is a choreographer, but he was also a male singer, single skater as well on the Junior Grand Prix. So he has some technical knowledge as well. And then these other younger coaches. So she's more of like, it's kind of like the Carolis in the U.S. And I was writing, I have notes about this, how the programs are very formulaic. But if you remember yes. when the Carolis, when Bella and Marta, like they would coach the very top people and they had assistants like Rick Newman and other people um, that would work with the level 10s and the juniors and kind of raise them to be ready for that group and like the second tier groups. And they would also do some of the technical work with the athletes in private lessons. So I have a feeling it's quite similar. Because if you notice with Nina Mosier, she doesn't even sit in the kiss and cry sometimes. Right. It, it does team. seem to be more of a manager, CEO kind of yes. position of, of one's career and training. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I think that's interesting. And I also I think that like she, there is so much competition in the rink because they take so many students and they've created such an environment that the competition fuels itself. I mean, the younger girls probably are trying to outdo the girls above them just from watching them. Like they don't even right. probably have to push that hard because the reality is the competition is going to do it itself on some level. So, right. No, I and then they set the tone it. too, which, you know, and then they were talking about if Trusova can let for the Olympics, he doesn't know. Um, but I think, yeah, his interview was interesting. He, he did say that he thought that Medvedeva was better than Zagitova and that her skating has improved. So, but I think it's hard to know, like, what is his honest opinion and what is he saying for political reasons? And Well, yeah. it's something about it made me wonder about the motivations yeah. and, and what was really happening here if, versus real he's, insight. He's working at Plashenko's rink now. So there is that element to it. So right. I think he had good points, but it... Look, um, so there was this um, one of our viewers named Yana, who is Russian. She uh, lives in Israel. She told me about this great Russian saying that I think we need to try to use as much as possible, Jonathan. And it says that the man changes his shoes as he is walking, which means that, like, you change your opinion to suit yourself as the wind blows. Tarasova does right. it all the time. And this... Well, there was a, I think there was a joke in 30 Rock that like somebody's grandfather was wearing a German uniform under the American uniform just in case or something yes. like that. Yeah, it's that concept. Yeah. You know how Taras was always like, I've never seen such beautiful skating. And like, meanwhile, a month before she was trashing the school or the person. So huh. hmm. she, she was in a pretty good mood during the commentating, it seemed like for these these videos. Yeah. So as a general note, and we can talk about this, but the whole you were talking about the book ending of the poses yeah. The way, and it's it's skating in general, and we've talked about the single skating and how, I know I, we mentioned, we were talking with Sandra about how the choreographic elements have really helped ice dance, and I really am so convinced. I think this is some yeah. of the reason about the way this sport is set up now. There's only so many ways to set up your programs to get maximum points that they all look exactly the same, and there are so many skaters, and the programs are all exactly the same because they of the seven elements that they squeeze in. For the short, that like I couldn't take it after a while. It was so... well, you know, and I know we get a lot of slack for seeming like we don't like Russia or something like that, or we don't like Atiri. But but really, what it comes down to for me is the excessive amount of the exact same Danny G choreography and layouts, just like you say. And it's never more obvious than when at this level you watch seven of them back to back. And it was again, there may have been different music playing. Not that it necessarily informed the the choreography itself. And I thought, okay, if you are a young junior girl, or, or yeah. however they're going to classify it in Russia, of course you want to go to a Thierry. There's big pole, clearly. Mm -hmm. Clearly something very special is happening there. And it's like, to me, you almost know instantly the program you will be skating the next season. Mm -hmm. you, you, you are literally signing up for this product that they offer. Would you yes. like to do it? And And... And that was a bit tough. And I think that's about Danny G. When I say a Terry mm -hmm. choreography, it's I would love to see her collaborate a bit more again on the outside. You know, yeah. not just John, not just Averbuch. I mean, just and I'm not saying 
it, it could be a Russian. Bring in somebody. There are so many great choreographers. It seems it seems a bit tired. The form they, and they all do the same transitions into things, which also comes from the choreographer and the coach because they want to get points and they think that's the best way to get it. And they're working the system, but it's like and they've kind of like maxed out the system. They're like almost like using the system to a disadvantage where it's right. now like skating is supposed to be sport and art and the art form is really put on and it's kind of killing it a little bit because there's no individuality. And I think that some of these skaters actually, the the ones that they tend to pick, like they got rid of Panenkova and Surskaya and Turaganova and maybe the skaters chose to leave, but you can kind of, you can make someone come to that decision by how you treat them as well. Right. Um, and I don't know what happened there, but I'm just saying, like, they seem to pick certain girls that each had a special quality about them, and it didn't shock me that the most talented ones stayed and the other ones left. And it just seems like they are continually doing that, and you could see that Camila Valjeva and Usasha both have, like, a lot of special qualities more balletic, more extension, um, just the overall aesthetic. And it's interesting to see how they're moving up within the system. Right. And it reminds me kind of, because um, I know you were talking about how we get, that we're hating on a Terry. If you watched the Carolis in any of their gymnasts back in their heyday, when they still own their gym and they were, everyone was going there. If you watched them in the eighties or the nineties, every routine, early nineties, like every routine was the same. Kim Zemeskel's construction was like the same as Erica Stokes's, as Hilary Grivich's, as Amy Shear's, as Carrie Strug's. And they would even like each person would have one special pose. Each person had one unique skill. They all did the same series and they both did the dismount. And there was nothing else in these routines. They each were like cookie cutter in right. terms of like minor different elements of flash, but it was all structurally the same. And I think that that's kind it, of... It almost reminds me of the old compulsory dance. <laughs> yes. Like, like, I felt like I was watching a compulsory dance where yeah. literally I saw everyone come out and do the same thing. But I to have different... to say, they did pick better music for some of the girls. And you wonder, why did they pick the absolute worst music for Zagitova when they picked better music for the other girls? Or at least right. less. Uh, Camila Valjeva's music with Spiegel was actually quite sophisticated and why not use something like that for Zagitova or refine right. her in that way so that's interesting that the t they just don't spend the time you could tell at a certain point they have no time and they need to get her ready for competition but I will say the strength of the program is their preparation their relative consistency from event to event to event is very impressive they clearly train full programs every single day with an attention to detail and their results speak for themselves throughout the year. They're warriors. You yeah. know, I mean, the, are, are you a warrior? Are you a lover? I forget that we're talking about like <laughs> this age group, but I mean, yeah. are you coming at it with this or are you coming at it with like that? Mm -hmm. And they are so in fight mode mm -hmm. and, and it's so incredible. They all have an incredible focus, mm -hmm. which I mean, at that age to see that many people have that much focus consistently is mind blowing to me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and even if there is someone who trips up on one moment, they usually, for the most part, they're all recouping right away, mm -hmm. which I think is a real testament to what you're saying. No one is clearly losing focus or no one is clearly getting in their heads the same way other people. So do you remember the year that Mariah Bell did the, the four double toes at nationals? Exactly. So we were there. Yeah. Yes. What, when, so the, what ha was going on in the rink before that is that a parent told us who's there they, that they were so... Um, focused on getting Mariah really um, confident with the first triple-triple that if she ever missed it, they would just turn off the music and start again because they wanted her to have clean run-throughs of it and that they were kind of like panicking and trying to build that's the confidence. That's the Debbie Thomas lesson. Right. Like, train through the mistake also, yeah. So again, like they would do that so that she had never recovered from it. And they had never trained a backup plan. These girls clearly train backup plans and are doing that every single day. And that's one of the real benefits you can tell. And their spins at a very young age are incredible. They've clearly been trained that they have to go for the levels and they have to go for the GOE every single day in practice. And that obviously 
has benefited them. These It's not like when you watch the Tom Z skaters and you see Max Aaron get away with a really terrible level one camel spin or a level two with poor extension and poor grades of execution. Well, because especially sometimes you think about these people that are all points oriented and you're yeah. like, here are some points right there on the table. What, what a nice way that you can get them. You know what I mean? And whenever you're in a big camp, like when Tom Z had 20,000 kids around the Rachel Flat, Jeremy Abbott, Agnes, Alexi Gillis era, and they had all the juniors, and you're going to lose either individuality or attention or connection, or you're going to, you know, Tom's, the program was absolute, no attention was paid, but they spent all this time on the jumps. So I think there's like, this happens just whenever you get a big group and clearly russia is funneling <laughs> skaters to it whether it's the federation whether it's the parents i mean they're seeing the results and they're they're making the decision you know the trade-off right so. right yeah. but I'm, I'm intrigued who taught a lot of these people because certain people just drop in again mm-hmm. paulina Tsurtskaya, like i know she struggled a lot with injury and mm-hmm you know, as a result, some of the focus and things like that. But something special was happening there mm-hmm. before she reached a tier. Costa and Aya didn't learn this inherent body carriage and all this sort of stuff from where she is now. So I'm curious to learn about that, that, that starter level. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about it a bit like in the U.S. or people like people in certain camps that just create really solid skills. And, and then then they graduate to more of a finisher coach and then it's all fine, you know. Yeah. So I'm intrigued who those people are in Russia, but I'm also, look at Mishin. I don't understand if this is an age thing, mm-hmm. but I would be I would be running to Mishin to learn that technique. Yes, but I think he's really struggled in ladies skating because he struggles with the aesthetic side of the sport. And then ladies, you have to be yeah. more complete, at least traditionally. I mean, we see that he's had success with Sumdurva and Tukimishiva, but... Most of his success has been with men and getting them quads right. and his ladies. But as, not... a, as a jump technician, yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't be utilizing that resource. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and in the same way, Carolina can go choreograph with Lori. You mm-hmm. can make it as much an outside priority as you want. But I, I just think to have those kinds of jumps available to you. We saw Elisabetta was posting those True. videos of her triple axel again. And it's like, he clearly knows what he's doing and it's sustainable and pretty exciting. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting that most of the top competitors here were from Moscow. If you noticed, uh, I mean, it's just the competition must just breed the competition, like the success within it. But we do have thoughts on the individual girls. Um, so <laughs> starting with Daria Usashova, who is the other one that I made you watch because we're going to be seeing her on the Junior Grand Prix next year, unless there's some mm-hmm. Sherpakova injury. So I thought it was interesting that she used the James Bond edit, almost the exact one that Wakaba used. And she also did a short program to Dracula in a red dress. And she skated to Please Don't Make Me Love You, which is really interesting for a 12 or 13 year old girl to be skating to this. Like... It was, I mean, alongside the Kill Bills and the Big Spenders and all these kinds of things, you're like, we really need to be Google translating these lyrics before yes. we have this happen. Yeah. I mean, it's just very overwrought. I mean, it's it's nice for a clearly lyrical skater that they're trying to do that a little bit age inappropriate. But so Dracula, the musical in a red dress, is that like a big thing in non-American countries? Like Dracula is not... A big well, that's the thing. British. There's a huge, there's a very popular German musical called The Vampire. I okay. mean, which is kind of that same kind of thing. Uh, and that kind of came over in it. But the Dracula ones, like you've heard of a couple of efforts that have, but they have never reached the mainstream in the US really. So I don't know what the deal is with Dracula because she did Dracula in a red dress. And so did um, uh, Voloshnar and Trankov. They did Dracula, but I think that was like a film score, but she also wore like a red. So I'm curious what the reference is. Well, um, I think that's just as basic as the cape, don't you? Just this like red and black concept. I don't know. Like it's, it's the girl that's wearing this red dress and it's cut in a certain way. So I think there's a specific I see. reference. Okay. Okay. But I'd be very curious. I don't know what it is. So if anyone knows what it is, because have you ever noticed that in Russia and in certain parts of Europe, like, um, the Notre Dame de Paris is like this huge musical. Right. And it's not in the U.S. ever. And we, 
I would like it to come to Broadway. Why is everything like Mean Girls turned into a movie? We just do really commercial horror. That's things. a whole nother show. Yeah. The yeah. jukebox musicals where they just take an album that they hope those people's fans now show up at that musical. And yes. they're like, huh, okay. It's really strange. Like what's happened? There's no production. Original but... content. Yeah. Anyway, the Dracula one or Notre Dame de Paris would love to come to Broadway. I would go see it. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I just thought it was interesting. So the James Bond, what did you think of the program? Well, in general, it, again, this was this was one of the first programs I really watched and thought there is evidence here that they are trying. Yeah. That that, that effort is being given to holding more artistic positions. Yeah. What I was distracted by the most of, especially when you're seeing this whole crop back to back. She seemed to be the biggest culprit of wearing the shoulders as earrings. A little this, bit on the jobs, this, yeah. Yeah, that was almost too detracting for me. And other than that, you just see kind of a blankness in the eye, which is also that age. You know, I'm sure she's not embodying mm -hmm. a James Bond spy villain right now. Understandable, she will find that if, you know, if she To pursues. me, what I was seeing with her also, you talk about the blankness. I saw a little panic because it seems like they're upgrading her jump content because she did a triple loop, triple toe in the short. And it seems like they're obviously trying to push her to be triple flip, triple toe, triple let's triple toe for next right. season. And she's not there yet. And it seems like the pushing with the content is at a real iffy point. You know how in the it used to be with the juniors, they would go for the triples and land them one day, fall another, back in the 95, 94 era. Now you have to have your triple-triple combination solid by Junior. So it's right. completely, yeah. But I noticed with her, like the triple flip was kind of a struggle. She turned out of it and had things, but yeah. it was just interesting. Also, you talked about how they're trying, but you know the point that like Yuna did her spiral sequence during the James Bond, they had like the da 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 da, like, and they they had a specific theme that Yuna did her spiral to da 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 da. Here she was just like spinning through all of it, like no acknowledgement of what was going on. But that was because the part that they were going to acknowledge was the forced Adele mishmash. Right. There were just like right. too many pieces of music pushed in together. So right. Well, and, and sometimes like when you bring in that kind of Adele thing, it also puts like an emo quality to the program and she had energy and speed and things like that. So I was, yeah, I didn't know that, that was a necessary hit for me. But. So the other one, I did talk about Senya Sinitsina before and yeah. I didn't notice, did you notice that her short program was basically an homage to Meryl Davis's uh, and Tessa Virtue's uh, short dances in the 21, uh, 2011, 2012 season. She was using the Celia Cruz that Meryl used, the da 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 La Vida Sun Carnival. And then they also, bingo, 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 that's what Tessa used. And it was da 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 boom, bum, ba dum, bum. And that was like her whole short program. Like they, they didn't just pick one, they picked them all. And yeah. that's what I think that seemed to be a problem. Yeah, here. highlights from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I thought I mean, that she had interesting edges. It was She was a non-Ateri skater, so it was like, oh, okay, different point of view. Uh, right, and and you saw it immediately. Yes. You, and now, you can say it was too much a hodgepodge of all these former short dances, but I mean, the music is very uncharacteristic of things coming out of the other camp. Yes. Um, and just the look, the packaging, and it just suddenly actually made you stick out to me in a really positive way. Yes. And, I, and yeah, I was a big fan. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun to watch. Um... That's another flexible back. Holy cow. Yes. So I In, insane. I thought she had a lot of power too to her and strength that I thought that there was potential staying power there. Watch, there'll be no staying power now, but I thought that <laughs> okay. there was, they looked to be the potential for something good. And she was one like, you know, how you talk about the, the trajection in mm -hmm. a triple triple. Her first triple was so enormous in that combo. And I was like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And then she was completely able to tack on the triple toe she afterwards. She looked like a little bit of like a mini Russian Tanya Harding at times, like with the actual something string. Something about the spring and the arc. Yeah. I was, there was something to it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was I was there for it. I liked it. I, I liked her, I have to say. And, and, and it's the, interesting. We were talking about the arms aloft, okay? <laughs> Which we joke because that's what the ESPN, or not ESPN. Um, British Eurosport. The British Eurosport guys always say, and now Johnny picked it up too. Oh, with the arm aloft, he says. <laughs> um, but, and we thought, well, why does everyone continue to do this given that the, it's no longer a bullet point necessarily the same way it used to be? Um, and I was talking to a coach who was like, well, they may still like that pull up idea that mm -hmm. it's forcing. Remember when Doug was on and he was yeah. talking about like pulling up like this, it, that probably it's for some of these girls, it's now actually assisting. It's no longer yes. a bonus, but almost a cheat in yeah. a way to help bring them up. And I thought, oh, well, that makes much more sense to me than everyone is ill-informed and still trying to get a feature. Especially... Yeah. Uh I noticed it with Tara Kanova and a lot of times you could see um, when you're not jumping from legs, especially on some of these triple triples, there's a lot of this going on in between and just overall sloppiness. And that was happening with some of the taller skaters, especially. Yeah. I said it about Trusova and I think I might've tried to reference this before. Remember um, Legally Blonde, the bend and snap? Yes. And that's what it kind of reminds me of some of her landings after that quad or something. She lands like she's bending and then comes back up to snap as okay. if she's about to do it. And I was like, that's not, that's not, even when Scott was talking about holding the landing position all the way around, mm -hmm. I'm missing a lot of that landing position aesthetic. Yeah. I'm missing the Frank. Yes. I was thinking <laughs> that we should send Elena Kanisheva to Frank because she was not super successful at this competition. Uh, we have seen her be far more successful. She finished in 11th place and uh, was 13th in the free, but her mistakes look to be under rotation related and they look to be sorry they were under rotations that look to be like minor technique fixes that could just happen with minor adjustments to like arms and legs like and how much jumping with your legs more than your arms and working it together because there is a lot of talent there just athletically there is like an inherent talent but it seems like the jumps are struggling because of her technique that's just like a little off and it could be fixed. Well, and that's the thing when you know, you're like, oh, you just need to make an adjustment and you're right yeah. there versus other, you know, juniors we see elsewhere where it's like, no, this is a lost cause. I mean, there's a cap to this. But... There were certain skaters here where I was like, you may have been fifth or you may have been like eighth, but I don't really see the future or the big picture. And yeah, yeah. so I thought with her, there she should go visit Frank at the retirement home and in Palm yeah. Springs and he can be all like just a little bit of adjusted. We could work on that landing position. Can you see him being like, Elena, show me a landing position. Is that what they do in Russia? <laughs> keep, yeah, exactly. You know, he would say something foul. Keep holding, yeah. keep holding. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Oh, the stories we, we could have gotten Scott to tell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was there for all of it. Um, so, yeah, with her, it was interesting there. Uh, I thought the technique could be a little fixed. It was interesting to me that Tara Kanova, she just has these big jumps, but then has issues. The triple flip was a mess. There's like just, there's a lot. Of, like she needs to be reined in and controlled and refined. And I don't. Do you ever watch the Instagram videos of the Angels of Plashenko rink? Uh, not enough to say that I know the reference that's coming. Okay. No, okay. but it just seems like, like Plashenko's an interesting person. He obviously has really good like technique and fundamentals, right? Like he has a lot of very good information, but he seems just like a complete chaotic person. And it's completely unclear, like who the main coaches are and who is organizing this and who's doing what and Sandu is there sometimes and this person and this and then he's there and it just seems like it's not all worked out and it's a lot of chaos like Serafim Sekanovich was there for a hot second um people seem in and out and it seems like chaos at like the chaos level. is the right word because it just even as they pushed it, it and I just I can only speak from my own industry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in opera, you get great singers that really don't know mm -hmm. how to tell you how yeah. they do. Uh, some people just have this gift and they cannot explain it. 
Um, and some people really have both, and some people are just great teachers that may not have, have had the experience, but this seemed like a publicity stunt yeah. a little bit from the outside where we're looking for a headliner. Yes. And it can be a headliner <laughs> who just is drawing in appeal and attention and recognition. But I wondered, because I've seen this also, it's like Pavarotti. I had a lesson with Pavarotti. The man was useless. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like from a technical standpoint, but what a great artist. And also you see Plushenko like going off on all of these tours and all of these television shows. So you just wonder what that structure is. And without structure, compared to what's happening in the Atiri camp, which is probably so highly structured and yeah. organized, I think it, you would just fall in the cracks. Yeah, I have a feeling that the, the uneven results we're seeing from a lot of talented skaters have to do with whatever that situation is. It seems like his wife is the mastermind, kind of using him and then also using the son as like a PR. Now they have kids and training kids together, and even with decent coaches, you'll get decent results. You may not get the Atari results, but it seems like his son is learning some solid fundamentals. And then obviously Evgeny has a lot of good drills and things when he comes in. But I don't know who, like, if there's a main coach who's really Well, because I think the way we see this work a little bit better is if Plushenko had aligned with Mishin for a period of time. Yeah. You know, something like a protege has been created, like Trenkov and whatever's happening with Nina, or whatever you see a fostering, you trust the fostering, and then it becomes its own thing, and I buy it. But, he doesn't but, seem like uh, a coaching personality. No. Right. Really. Yeah, because I think to be the most ideal coach, it isn't about you, mm -hmm. and inherently you don't perform that well that long and have that many medals because you weren't about your own performance yeah you know i think it's understandable it's hard to then suddenly really be all about the pupil yeah no. it's interesting that a lot of the more successful coaches are the ones who didn't quite make it and then they or even like orser and marie france like they made it but they were like the silver medalist instead of the gold medalist and that thing that was missing, I think, drives them in the organization and in the motivation. It's in, it's just like an interesting... To learn. Yeah. I, I think they strike me as people learning about their craft, perfecting their craft, versus these people, someone like Chris Bowman or someone who just Michelle, comes out... Or, or, or Javi, Javi even, like as Sandra was saying, he could just wing it. Yeah. So, so then are you as steeped and as a disciple of technical elements, whereas maybe someone who had less inherent God-given talent had to work to put those puzzle pieces together so they know how to relay the information better? Yeah. It's just been very interesting that the Angels of Plushenko has seemed very chaotic. And it would be really great if there were Russian people that would be like, oh, yes. You know, like explaining who everyone is. But it just doesn't seem like it's quite organized yet. But they've doing. Right tremendous publicity for it that's right except for us following skaters through their journey yeah you know i i've not seen him at enough events with even if they were random people no i'm very curious to watch the son against his son's competitor but it's even interesting the son is like off doing shows now that will benefit the son from performing in public but then in terms of your actual training and development as a child a little bit curious to go on tour or when you're that young or your relationship with the sport. Yeah. I don't know. That probably does weird things, whether that's entitlement or whether that's burnout. I don't know. It could it could really go either way there. And I think when you get the attention too young... So it's interesting is that that next Ice Age show was on TV and it had young skaters. And we're going to... We can just talk about it now before we go into the top girls. Um, and one of the... The winner, who is the male, is um, a Terry's student, Arseny Fedotov. Uh, um, and I probably put the wrong and fastest on the wrong syllable with his last name, <laughs> but he was doing double axle, triple toe at eight years old and had incredible speed and showmanship and just like that it quality in a boy. And he's adorable. But now Danny G is giving interviews to the press saying, don't ask about him. It's inappropriate. Well, you did just put him on TV in front of millions of people and they fall in love with the kid and now they want to watch the development. So again, it's yeah. like when you give them the attention before they can handle it. It's, it's, it's just well, an and, and I think they know what they're doing because even this, yes. I meant to say this when we were talking about Camila Valieva or whatever um, in the Picasso program, the reason Atiri says that's her favorite program is because now throngs of people are going to go see what Atiri's favorite program is. Do you, you know, know what it reminds me of? 
Do you remember around like 2005, 2004, 2005, like there were all these songs that came out by like Lindsay Lohan and Britney Spears and they were all about like, they like don't want people to watch them and like, you know, there are rumors starting and the awful paparazzi, but meanwhile they would be doing like the pantyless shots and taking the staged photos for attention explicitly so yeah it's, it's a, lot a, mi- of like, a, a mixed message i'm a sure mixed message which <laughs> yeah. like don't watch me <laughs> but i'm gonna get out of the car like this you know? right. like right. yeah so there's exactly. a lot of playing with the, going on here so right right because you know when they say don't ask about him it's only going to make us want to know more you know, about well that's just it yeah yeah so um by the way you can find his programs online they they're all there so cataloged and tagged well and i'm intrigued to watch um what happens now with this we're seeing more and more male skaters under the tutelage of a cherry and so i I mean we had seen that the guy from georgia Mm -hmm. um as in the country of and for a while and it was you know kind of mediocre results and it wasn't necessarily the talent level she was working with on the female side of things so so i'm just intrigued in general to see see how she does how the camp does um there have with been some boys that have gone missing teams. like Ilya skirta there was one he, i think he's still around but was injured and then Remember there was a boy that skated with like a Jewish star. He was doing like a Schindler's List. It was like very literal. I forget what his name was. Adian Pekeyev was on. Who the was one of my favorites? He yeah. was. I I had such high hopes for him. And but you know, males go through puberty too, where your chest grows and gets bigger as well. And this spinny technique is difficult. And in male skating, they're definitely going to differentiate between the skating skills more than probably they will in the ladies as much. Right. Right. So, especially at that time with Patrick Chan and those kind of skaters and Han Yu. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But, yeah. Yeah. I'm intrigued to see the development. Did you notice that Sherbakova looks taller now? Yes, I did. <laughs> I definitely did. And I was looking and I was like, oh, it's happening. It's it's starting. Well, and that's the thing, especially when I was comparing her to Camila, who keeps coming up. I, whereas Camila, I was like, all it, all the planets have aligned. So yes. this school of technique is doing really well by you right now. And this is a great match. Yes. And then I came over here and I was like, this is someone still trying to make this work. Yeah. Yeah. And I like and Medvedeva had a couple of growth spurts too, where she went through and then adjusted, and then and then eventually the wheels fell off the bus at the end. Interesting with Shabakova is that you can see she's doing what the Zagitiva does on the Lutz, where there's a lot of like twerking of the body. It's not just up and down, it's like a turning motion when she goes to pick in to try to generate the rotation on the flip and lutz. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with her, because she's either real on or off in her programs you could tell like she i don't know she's of the three she seems to be the least consistent between trusova um kosternaya and sherbakova she seems to be the most inconsistent of the three of them and i think when all three hit if you will she often seems to get that third slot yes if everybody goes clean and everyone's getting marked PCS in a kind of non-biased way, I see her kind of always third, even though obviously what she's doing is remarkable. Mm-hmm. She does some neat spin things with the mm-hmm. Beelman with her arm and she whips it around and stuff like that. But th- she's another one also now given the height mm-hmm. that just because you can do a spin position doesn't mean we need to see that spin position. And again, I know why they're doing it. Of course, yeah. I know why they're doing it. It's just unfortunate that this is how it's happening because some of them are literally these look what I can do kinds of spins instead of then when the next person comes out with a beautiful position that goes with the music and you melt, that's what skating well, is. Well, she it's to me that. is like almost Sasha in certain respects, but it's too She's rushed. close, yes, and there's a disconnect because Sasha wouldn't, even though Sasha could have gotten herself into these yeah. positions, she would have gotten herself into prettier versions of the positions. It even goes down to the tights over the skates. Like the little last finishing details are not always accentuated She's like still, she's like almost exquisite. Like almost. Yeah. It's, it's the, the musical quality is there when she hits the notes. I, th- I really think that the long program is, is quite hideous. And I wonder what the dress is referencing. I hate it. Well, it's and I lot. think for, 
for someone where we're worried about this, yeah. don't draw our attention to it by adding a couturement like all over that yeah. area. It's a bit, it's a bit, it doesn't do her any favors. I have to it. say, I still think that though she doesn't have the quads and the triple axle not in the program, Kostrnaya, I still think is the one that is most likely to survive puberty. She came in later. She has a different technique. She seems more senior to me in the skating skills, uh, especially compared to Trusova. She has the inherent musicality. She has the look. She won the Junior Grand Prix final. I think she's got a great shot at the competitions. Even if she's second at Junior Worlds, I still think she might be the one that has more success when they hit oh, the she, senior. Yeah, this is a big picture kind of girl. Who yeah. cares what you get at Junior Worlds, honey? Like, if you get second or third because these girls outjumped you, just mm. don't even worry about it. Like, and I love that she's almost, she's defying mm -hmm. the, the formula. Mm -hmm. And it's working. And I love it. That double axle is so gorgeous, like right from her leg. And it's the buoyancy in her arms. Mm -hmm. You know, I said it a couple of times, like it's like she's like has a ball of water that she'll never let like mm -hmm. fall off her arm. Because like I was saying, some people would almost kind of hit a position. Some people would hit it and leave it. And she like creates a moment with each position that just maybe it's also that you can't quite teach it. You know, I mean, there's something born there, but she's still paying attention to it. And obviously, I mean, I've gushed about her forever. I can't say enough amazing things. Oh, you like her? Yeah. Uh, you know, news flash. I am a big fan. <laughs> Jonathan, what did you? Th what would you give her performance at the short program? Well, I love. You know, I love. What music would I give her? Or no, what? I said, what would you give the performance? Would you give it two snaps? <laughs> I w let's see. I give it a boy and creative snap <laughs> in the shape of beautiful wing arms. <laughs> it's That's beautiful it wing be. arms, two snaps. Yeah, uh, yes. Exactly. Okay. But now, unfortunately, speaking of wing arms, I know that sometimes the elbows out is a sign of just like a traditional rotating technique, mm -hmm. like kind of classic. But I'm noticing her elbows a little bit more, and I hope that's not a thing. It could okay. just be. Maybe I haven't an been noticing trip. it as much, but now. Okay, she... then I hope it's. I just made that up, and it does. I did course... notice it with some of the other skaters, though. I will tell you. So it was. Yeah. Do you know what I mean by this? And I know that it's not um, necessarily the end of the world to have a classic position where it's a little more like that. But this is really chicken wingy yeah. at times. The Brady yeah. position, yes. A little bit, just when I'm noticing it. Mm -hmm. It detracts from all of her other amazing, beautiful qualities. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Trusova here did a great job. And she is she's a fighter. That's the thing that's interesting about her. It's kind of like I'm more interested in her competitiveness than the actual skating because her actual skating when she's not jumping, she skates on a stiff leg a lot when she's doing her footwork. And her back is so rigid and she doesn't really express music, although she does give attack and attitude. She's not really expressive in a more nuanced sense. So right. it's kind of like that Slitskaya where like I'm interested in her as a sports personality, but I'm not really necessarily enjoying what I'm watching for the sake of art. I'm more enjoying it because it's like entertainment in right. that sense yeah yeah and even the difference you know obviously amber glenn didn't have a tremendous outing in her long program at nationals but she was doing bang bang by lady gaga and mm -hmm. here was a child doing it but at least what i'll say before the performance started to to fail amber at least i saw kind of like a woman doing it because she liked the song mm -hmm. and, and this kind of kill bill idea was just kind of just put on well, I think you they know, did it because she's not, they seem to classify the skaters. Like, Sherbakova is the little music boxy one. Kostrnaya, they spent a little more time thinking of what to give her. Trusova is kind of like the aggressive girl, so they're just going to throw her all of that music. They don't have well, and, time to and develop And if that's it. the case, which I understand, I think they could do it even more effectively, even with more driving kind of yeah. music. But the... It does speak, I know it goes without saying, the testament to the depth of skating in Russia. Because when I saw she was seventh after the short, I thought, and then it's these things when you know what's coming. Because mm -hmm. then she's skating, and I was like, well, that element was clean. Oh, <laughs> that element was clean. Oh, she must have had a problem on the combo. Uh-oh, here it comes. And then it was like a minor, 
a minor nothing out of a little thing at the end of the combo. And I was like, wow, <clears throat> that's seventh place, you yes. know? Yeah. <clears throat> it was Our interesting. Ladies, what that was, was third. Yeah. I mean, one fall will kill you in here, but it, it, there is a assembly line quality to the competition, which <laughs> it's like, do you, yeah. would you rather see the more consistency or do you want to see the more individuality? It's kind of a balance. That's not, and I, I just want to feel. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it would be great if you land your jumps while you're doing that, but yeah. I would always rather see something unique and different. Yeah. And I wish some of the bullet points also um, in some of this criteria within step sequences or within the transitions in and out of jumps, that there is um, more credit given to variety, to What's creativity. So funny with these girls is that they are training them. They are doing program after program after program after... I mean, these girls are being so honed for next year. They, uh, Sherpa Kova is supposed to go to the European Youth Olympic Festival. They obviously have Junior Worlds. It's unclear if they're going to do the Russian Cup final in two weeks that Medvedeva is going to compete at. So you're just wondering, like, it's... I mean, they are doing so many... And numbers. they... A lot of these girls already did senior nationals. Yes. I, I mean, I, I was like, wow, they have a second nationals with yeah. all of that. But I mean, it is making them so resilient. Resilient, exhausted. Um, they have competed so many times. I mean, it gives them tremendous competitive experience, which is a, a benefit. But also there is the potential for injury and burnout going for, going forward. So Injury for sure, but also even the burnout of how could you make one of those special magical program that transcends the competition? How can you possibly be expected to do that every time you go out when you go out so often? Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be near impossible for Michelle to have mm -hmm. done Zalame meaningfully mm -hmm. as many times as these girls are going out. I mean, I want a writer to write the edge of glory about these three girls. Like I am sure it is fascinating what is going on in yeah. the rink just every day the ups and downs, they score them every day. I mean, it just must be such an interesting arc on right. what happens. The mini, the mini dramas of the week and what is happening as they prepare for these competitions. Like it must be, it's interesting because they've each had different shining moments. Obviously, Costa and I wins the Juju Grand Prix final. That's a huge accomplishment. Sherbakova wins the senior nationals, which no one really saw coming. You know, they thought it was Trusova, Trusova wins the Junior Nationals after she won Junior Worlds and was kind of the leader. So it's interesting that they each keep fighting and coming and coming back and that it'll only make them better in the long run. But it's... Right. It's, it's it, immense. It's, it's, it's immense, immense pressure, you know. Yeah. What are the mothers going through? What are they drinking? And even, are they like, even allowed? I mean, that's the other thing. To have this kind of control means that they must have a zero tolerance and I wonder, policy like, for parents. When do you start getting like the gifts from the government when you win medals or like set up? Like at what point does Junior give you that now? Because these girls are winning a lot. So well, and getting a lot of press. And I mean, that's the thing. Again, the because of these three girls, we are talking about a junior Grand Prix circuit that never got this much airtime, that what, never got this much coverage. What are Terry and Danny G and Sergey Dudikov getting from this? Because, you know, when you're a coach, you get a certain salary based on the success that you've achieved. So when you have this many medals, like what kind of bonuses structure are they getting? That's what I wonder, too. So, I mean, they Terry is working incredibly hard right now. Like, it's an unsustainable energy, I think, for long term, but she has a system that she's creating. And I would be very curious what her end goal is, because I don't see her doing this for 40 years. You know, I think right. she'll become, eventually become more of an advisor or a federation president or something. Like, I wonder what the future is. Well, like, will Danny G take over for her? And then will someone take over for her? Like, is, what is going to happen there? I mean, Trenkoff was even saying, because he was talking, he was like, I don't understand how she motivates them. Mm -hmm. She's like, it should be studied how she motivates these girls. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously he comes from a strict camp where they, you know, also reined in pairs girls all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I can't, I just can't imagine that like, even within the system, they're like, I, it seems impossible. Yeah. It seems absolutely impossible how she is able to focus these girls this way. It Which should be studied. What's interesting about Moser's camp is that the males are allowed to be more diva-like and the girls are blamed for everything and they have to be really tough. And if you've noticed with Moser's girls, they each are kind of, they're more exquisite than the guys. They're like more special, but she's yeah. also 
tougher on them than they are. It's just an interesting little yeah. nuance. Well, that... I, I mean, in the same way, Atiri, you know, in the past has been like, well, the women are so much stronger. Yeah. Uh, she's like, women are tougher. The, the, her female students work harder. They complain less. And well, I, I think don't know. The benefits of being the Yulia or being the Sutnikova are so immense or being Medvedeva or Zagitova that these girls will fight for it, that they really want to be that special skater in the show, you know, to have that ice. I mean, look, it's so special in Russia. It was so special in the U S to be the Peggy or the Michelle or the, so yeah, it's interesting what they will go through. So, but the men were really interesting here because Daniil Samsonov was absolutely fantastic, especially in the short program. I mean, his free was amazing. What he did. The short program was incredible. And you yeah. know what? Isn't it terrible? I just wanted to put him in my pocket. <laughs> I was like, I should have looked him up on Wikipedia. He can't be like. So he's 12 different. days too young for the Junior Worlds. So, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. That's a shame. So he'll be on the Grand Prix with Alyssa Liu and probably Camila next season. But he has quad Lutz already. His triple axle is enormous for his height. Just the overall yeah. speed, skating skills. Again, he's from their school. But did you see that it seems like he's kind of Sergey's boy. Like, Sergey lifted him up after he won. And I thought that that was such a nice moment of just joy. Because so often these coaches don't look very happy. And I know it's a very Russian thing. But they're not enthusiastic when these skaters are doing these immense things they're just acting like and there are they are achieving immense things yeah. like that's yeah i have to say i didn't see as far as that part he <laughs> does lift him up and, and it was okay. rather adorable so okay it was just because like usually sergey just looks kind of like that expressionless it's, gnarly guy with bald skinhead it's, like it's humanizing in a yeah. way do you know what i mean to see that kind of and it's why i used to love danny g watching him be so tender with these three junior girls yeah. when they were coming up before these the, yeah. these seasons yeah it's just interesting to watch a terry's daughter is getting like the same bleach blonde hair as she gets older she's starting to look like a terry danny is morphing into the male version it's fascinating it's yeah, yeah. i guess <laughs> danny by the way have you noticed that he's aged like incredibly like he's only 27 oh, I was or like, 28 yeah, i've not noticed that he's aged yeah like it must be like vodka and cigarettes like we need some some vitamins going on. The stress. And he dresses. He those aren't inexpensive um, designers. He's wearing in those. No. Yeah. But I'm telling he, you, Sergey Razanov may be the one to, the attractive one. He's there's okay. A, we'll, yeah. we'll be sure to check him out. Yeah. Danny G. <laughs> I think the stress it's going to him. He's not as okay. He was more appealing in the in the past. <laughs> oh gosh and for me i'm like oh he looks better now <laughs> okay <laughs> how about the one um i still follow him victor your victor your boyfriend there who who worked um who worked with anna anna yeah he oh, like Riva. still is doing the face masks and everything yes yeah a very intriguing instagram follow <laughs> yes, there very yes, intriguing. it's worth an investigation yes yeah. yes now, what else stood out to you with the junior men? I still like that Artur, Daniela. Oh, Daniela. Oh, my gosh. So I was trying to remember. It was, was it, I don't know if it was Junior Worlds or if we covered Junior Russian Nationals last year as well. He, I, I, when I first discovered his skating, that was the last, or the first time I had seen him, I was like, what is this amazing skating? And so it was really nice to see him do, I mean, I would have loved to have seen a medal, of course, but um, to see, especially the short program, I, I don't know, I just really love his skating. And again, to me, that's something that is not taught. Yeah. That is that is a boy who was born to dance and move. In an, and he oh, yeah, loves sort of, music and movement, you could tell. There's an inherent you, you love. You can just tell. You can just tell. It's he needs to be a little tough. tougher, though. You can also tell that the long program, maybe not as trained as the short program. Well, it's, it becomes, you know, when you're talking about the formula with maybe a Terry programs with their transitions and things yeah. like that, there is a total formula to the kind of male skater Jonathan loves. Yes. And it's going to be this one who was born to move, feels the music and just 
you know, F flails up. about and messes up the jumps. Thank you. That took me way too long to work around that. Um, but you were into Ryan Yonke, if you will. Yeah. Uh, well, let's not get carried away. But no, I'm just kidding. The Brazilian so, program was your moment. Yes. Obvious. But come on, Jeremy, and then yeah. Joshua, and then even to a point, Jason, you know, I mean, it's like, and Dmitry Eliev, Kolyada, like all of these people, like, just add them to the list of another absolutely beautiful skater that will probably give me heartburn so my for favorite, all the seasons to come. <laughs> my favorite Joshua Farah story is obviously you sit next to the Schumann brothers at the uh, at the Nationals. Amen. Usually when yeah. you see Jonathan like at the St. Paul Nationals, that's who he's sitting in the front row with. And Bill uh, Schumann is a very famous opera coach. And there's Christopher, um, who also is involved in the opera world, the business world. And he's he always goes with Joshua Farah as well. Our Aunt Anita, who's um, uh, a medium. A psychic. A psychic. Yeah, you yeah. Know, she was watching Joshua Ferris, and she said, you know, he was doing the letters and the numbers of his name and said, when she was watching him in Greensboro, said, he will do very well and then disappear forever. And you, but you, Yes, and when, when they first told me that story about, remember, Anita said she felt he would get his one medal and just kind of disappear from the scene. And I was like, oh, is Anita a judge I'm unfamiliar with? And then they're like, no, Aunt it's Anita. our psychic aunt. And I was like... Okay. And then sure enough, he won the medal and sure enough, he disappeared. And it was heartbreaking to me. I, I just adored his skating so much. Did you know I got a reading? Oh, like a palm reading? No. Like you give her your name and your numbers. And, um, like your Dave, like your social security number. And your no, I did number. not. What did no. I tell you about? Yeah. <laughs> no, because like in numerology, like your name goes into And then it. a birth date or something. Yes. Yeah. But like, okay. there are different ones. Cause like certain things, like they all tell me that I'm like a unique number, no matter like which one I get, if I do it like the one way or the other, but like the way she does it, I think I'm a four cause I'm two twenty two. whatever I am. They're like, Oh, you're an interesting one. Like, it's like... Yeah. Old news, though. We <laughs> knew you were going to be some weird off-the-chart number. <laughs> it was like, it was like oh, oh. Like, it was, yeah. I don't know about that, Aunt Anita. I don't know if they tell everyone, oh, you're this, but... Yeah, they say that to all the girls. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I no, did I'm get just... it done. But you, she does it over a tape recorder. I had to go find a tape recorder at like a radio shack. It was quite complicated. It was in... like a like a cassette tape. Yes, Aunt Anita has not upgraded her like medium. Yes, yeah, Isn't... yeah. Okay. <laughs> we should take her to Vegas with the. She knew Joshua Ferris was one and done. That's right. They also I, I could have told her his hotel. history. Remember, like. He had the broken leg and the allergic reaction and like everything that happened at those nationals. And then teased us so much because then he filmed two different quads and when he was attempting that comeback that never was, he just breaks my heart over and over again. And I hope this Russian boy does not do the same because he's so special. He it's should visit so Frank special. in Palm Springs. Like he yeah. looks or like Frank would like him. He but would... this is an argument I have to send someone to Mishin because what's inherently there would never go away. Would it? I worry. I worry it's contagious. No, in that no, way. not like he has this. This boy feels that music, so he would always be musical regardless. So, so send somebody to clean up the consistency on those jumps. I don't know. know if you even watch like Skate America from '97. When Plushenko came on the scene, there's just an inherent tackiness. I mean, we were introduced to Plushenko wearing silver lame. You can't unsee it. You can't unsee it, Jonathan. You saw and that. And you know what? It, it set the stage, didn't it? <laughs> it really did. Dick it Button really was did. like, oh, the program is not up to the level of his technique. It was like, he was like stunningly horrified. So Correct. Appropriately horrified. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Um... But and then, I don't think Yevgeny was born with the inherent talent uh, no. movement that that this kid has. And some of these, it was interesting to see Erikov. So Erikov was junior world champion last year. He was skating. And I wonder if they developed a, a senior program for him. And they just like chopped off 30 seconds. Because during his final spin, I watched a couple of YouTube videos to make sure that I wasn't just watching like a bad upload. They literally just like fade out his music. That's like Josh Groban singing, and it's in the middle of a phrase, and they just like tune it down. Like there's no. Like, real ending. Oh my gosh! New time limit? No problem. Just no turn down the volume slowly. It, it's like okay. all those programs that Roheen made when he didn't pay attention to the time limits. Remember when when Jason 
um, made Riverdance and Rohim made it like 40 seconds too short and it was just because like Rohim wasn't paying attention. Like that's what the parents will tell you oh, is like the real story. I didn't remember that story. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Our former friend who uh, works for the ISU now whose daughter was in that school has a lot of thoughts about that. But anyway. Um, there you go. An interesting little tidbit. But yeah, that's what it seemed like was going on there. I have to tell you. So, yeah, probably not an ideal solution to their problem. You know, not an <laughs> ideal one, but and he I, doesn't he doesn't move or feel necessarily the same way that others might. So it's like just give him new music. So you want to send him to Misha, which is fine for the jumps, but I want to send Artur Danielian to Lambiel because I think it would be such an interesting choreographic match of just sure i i would say sure have him come in and choreograph but Mm -hmm. i want to make sure that he he gets the jumps in line and i don't know that lambiel will do that because Mm -hmm. dennis of is a is an unusual case i'm not really it doesn't tell me enough about he's a very stereotypical obscure european boy with the consistency do you notice they always tend to be like brilliant and then like (laughs) at <laughs> the bottom of the rankings. Even Brashnet Europeans, it was like he was like going, 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 and you're like, what what happened? Yeah, yeah. well, whatever happened, it reminds me, remember Vacheslav Zagorodniuk or whatever his name also, was? Also, he was also at the 97. Uh, <laughs> it was totally that era. I knew who um, else was there. It's on Aaron's, I'll link to it in the, here, you gotta watch the men's broadcast. You have Todd Eldridge, his shoulder pops out, he pops it back in, and then it's like right. all of your Russians. You've got, um, Vacheslav Zagrudnik, uh, you have Alexander Apt, and you have like young oh, Raphael right. yelling at him at the boards. Yeah. And so I guess the coach that coached Vacheslav Zagrudnik like must have split with Galina after Lillehammer, and like he was coaching him, and she was with Scott Davis, which was also a treat to watch. So right, an ill-advised collaboration, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting to. An mm. interesting broadcast for the Dick commentary on the men. Yeah. Yes, that was an excellent event. So <laughs> what would you have Coaster and I escape to? I think we... I, like, you know, here's the thing. Also, I was thinking about Coaster and I because she does one of your beloved hodgepodge Romeo and Juliet, you know, mashups. And she's also in a soft, flowy, traditional dress, which obviously the most modern version was very modern and it's Desiree singing. So... It's one of those things that happens sometimes when you're like, I'm confused what era I'm in mm-hmm. right now. Because I'm listening to a pop singer from a modern take on this story, but you're wearing like the balletic outfit almost from, mm-hmm. I want to see her do a war horse. I want to see her do- Tosca. No, no, it, she can do prettier than that. I think like um, something lyrical, I, I want something ethereal. Oh. Well, we were talking about ethereal versus earthy. I want to see her like transcendently, like, and I think a lot of the um, Ravel or mm. a lot of the um, French ballet music, like, I think it would just be like, oh my gosh, next. I'll give you that for one program. Okay. I would like a Malaganya for the maybe. Oh, for a, something spicier. Yes, because we saw her. But yes, I think she may have both sides to her. Oh, she absolutely does. She absolutely. So what I'm actually going to. Yeah, then but we do not that any Malaganya. The Christy Yamaguchi, the Black Orchestra one is the. Yeah. Co- not the Maria Butcherskaya. It sounds like it was recorded off of a, an attitude. No, it has to be TV. high class. High, yes. It has to be a pre- as pretentious the, a recording as we can find. <laughs> and the dress could be either Lisa McKinnon or Matu. From yeah, I'm intrigued by him. I don't think they would ever go for it because they seem to be into the gingerbread, you know, all this kind of like extra kerfuffling. Um, but I think her in something simple, I, I think, would be so special. There's something so angelic, I know, with the wings or whatever of that short program. Like, there's something inherently special that she can do in that that other girls are not doing. Other girls are also doing fire. Now, did you see her? Toss her coat at a Terry. It was one of my favorite Instagram quotes. This has become a thing, right? Because mm-hmm. we've seen her do it a couple of times, but this time was the most revved up. And I, you know, you make up a whole story, right? And I was like, this is my story where she's defying the formula. I don't need a triple axle. I don't need the quads. 
Take my coat. <laughs> well, I just love Terry was like, hold an edge. Uh, Terry caught it, but she was like, she was like, oh, what was this? Yeah, exactly. It was as good as when Gracie threw it at Frank. That was, that was different and, and not caught on film, in fact. <laughs> not caught on film, but amazing. Yeah, exactly. Well, actually a bit more devastating when you really think about that one, but this has a sass element to it, which well, I really appreciate. there was a sass appreciate. element because of Frank's <laughs> reaction. Like, it was... Maybe not realistically funny, but it was funny in the retelling of like how. And uh, the facial expression of it was very probably a deadpan, dry comedic delivery of like, okay, or I'm not doing that or whatever it was. Even him telling Phil Hirsch that they were over, like you can just see the deadpan of Frank being like, well, of course we're not working together. Yeah, what kind of question is that? Yeah. And unfortunately, <laughs> all the people that misunderstood all of that, they were so. Um, ill-advised when they thought he fired her inappropriately or something like that. Well, but, he probably should have told her first. That probably well, he probably should but, have declined the but interview. It, it all kind of happened in real time, almost where yes. he was like, "Yeah, no, I'm not doing." It was that. obvious that it was over if you were in the back room. Or yeah, just, or just paying attention that season if you were breathing oxygen. Did you just try to make a reference to if you were in the room where it happened? <laughs> no, dear God, no. Okay, great, great. So I would not have her skate to that. No. All right, yeah. so you're going to Four Continents tomorrow. I leave tomorrow morning. I'll have to pack at some juncture. I am very excited to go because I uh, have not seen a lot of these people live. So and you're going to be seeing your good. public, which you love. So. Oh, sure. <laughs> yes, well, Alyssa whatever. Sisney didn't realize you were in Detroit, and she was very upset that she didn't get to meet you. So. Oh, she's such a sweetheart. I actually yes. met her in Nice, but I, I probably won't bring that up. Yeah, there's probably not a good time. She probably doesn't remember... Anything yeah. that happened there. Exactly. Exactly. God, Jonathan. Wait, just pour yourself. I know. Salt. I know. Because at first I did the same thing with another skater. I was like, oh, I was at. Never mind. I don't remember. Nice to meet you. How are you? <laughs> yes. So, who are we excited to see? Um, so, all the pairs have withdrawn. There are only eight left. So, I mean, literally, these are going to be huge point grabbers. Huge point grabbers. So, that's even worse for Deanna and Nate not getting the assignment. I know. Because now anyone who gets is going to get top eight points and it's just going to... Even if they're last. Even yeah. if they're in last place. Yeah. Oh, man. So I'm very curious to see if Ashley and Tim continue their momentum. Do Tara and Danny. Elton John has been visiting both teams. Um, right. Do more Taros and Marinero back up their Nationals performance with another successful one? How will Sui and Han look? Will I they... mean, obviously, that's the number one for me. It's right. to, see, to see those programs. So I would like the... you to hone in and tell me everything she does. Yes. Just, you mean, like, on the sides of the boards? And everything. everything. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is the wind in the hair? How does it look? Okay. Does it look like okay. old school Barish Nye and Secret Lizzo when they're skating? Uh, how is the triple sound call situation? Like, okay. Yes. I, I will be on it. Okay. <laughs> is this Vanessa and Morgan's year? Like what is going to happen? And then we haven't seen the full free skate yet. So you have a job to do there. I do. And really I'm to see that I don't recall seeing Sway and Han in person. I think this may be the first time I actually see them. Did you see them at Boston Worlds? I wasn't at Boston Worlds, unfortunately. I went to Nationals that year, but was working during Nationals, oh. or uh, Worlds, rather. Okay. Um, it was disappointing. But um, because I think the programs look like they have such potential, especially the long, which we didn't really get to see. We were just seeing snippets of mm -hmm. um, from practice footage. So I'm really excited to see that in a formal setting start to finish. And now you'll get to see all of your ice dance teams against one another, which we know you love to see. So you'll get no. to be you'll be coming back. I want you to talk about things like all of the patterns, Jonathan. I know. I'm going to bring my book about the Tango Romantica. With Will me. Piper and Paul be important skating next to Hubble and Donahue? Like I want the all of the Jonathan and Weaver Zellers. and Weaver and Poche are going, correct? Yes, and you know that I, I think love this will be that, quite a matchup. And you know that opening section that I love with the clusters and the footwork that I'm yeah. obsessed with. And, I know, think the depth in that in that division in particular will be know, What is happening to me this season? I'm like, I'm obsessed with Weaver and Poge and Chalk and Bates. Like, what is happening? Because you know what? Because we have had to listen to so many people talk about reinventing themselves when they come back just as the same, if not worse, oftentimes. So to see people actually transform themselves and take a step and do something different, I'm here for it. I love that. 
I don't think that I'm changing my shoes as uh, I'm walking because I'm acknowledging the past. I just really appreciate what they're doing this season and their material. And I do see improvement. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So, but of course, seeing them all back to back will be, I think, very informative for me. I understand Ice Dance better when I'm seeing it live Mm. for me. Well, I want you to pay attention to John, Luke and Caitlin again, too, because we're on them. We need to see where is this going? Yeah, especially amidst this lineup of, of very stellar skaters. Yeah, and I I mean, obviously, Riku Kihira against Kaori against, and Ensu, you have to be sending all of the good vibes for that triple sal cow. You know. I know, I know. <laughs> you mean Alyssa Liu's triple axel? No, just yes. kidding. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 the ladies could go one of many ways, but again, Ensu will be the first time I see her live. Mm-hmm. Kauri, first time I see her live. Rika Kahira, first time I see her live. I'm very excited for those. And you know what? I'm intrigued because it's my Mihara is going, right? Uh, as Satoko's. Yes. And Satoko is competing in like the Bavarian Open. Which was an unusual choice that happens at the exact same time. But we do And know, it's like the I name think... of a donut, like, uh, like a Duncan. Like, what is going on here? I don't understand. <laughs> I do know that Shinamano, I think, is the caller at Four Continents. Oh, Oh bless! Oh yeah. So so, where has he now, been, by the way? Why was he like missing? An well, we know role? we know that some rinks were like having him in to like uh, work with their skaters, as they should. Yes. Uh, yeah, but I was like, I don't know if I need that toxic energy. I <laughs> want you to meet him. I want you to meet Shinamano. Obviously, okay. we're huge fans. Yeah, I looked up all of his like records after he was becoming such a stickler. To some of my favorite girls that is, is Again, 15, 16 season. Perhaps not the most imaginative skater, not the most, uh, not the Plushenko or Michelle Kwan, but they, again, it's, it's the ones that ne- not necessarily do that. Well, that these great especially minds also cling to rules or, yeah. or procedural items to quantify the art they're seeing. I'm Isn't wondering. that terrible? Could you ever imagine you Sandra think he's very, about... He must be an interesting OCD person, right? Like, he has to be just fascinating. Yeah, I would think. I would think. And he lives, like, in Minnesota, I believe. Or oh, Minnesota. that I didn't know. That I didn't. But I wonder if in advance, I, I mean, it could all be speculation. But if I was someone who was prone to under-rotating and being called and I wanted to make I a would run. I such a flu. I would say, I'm going to Bavaria. Goodbye. Yes. So, my, this is it. Have fun, honey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. I am... Oh, what do you think? Does he coach? What does he do? Does it... Do they just pay him to come in and... Well, I mean, he would be as as strict a, an advisor as you could get, you know? I... Yes, I'm into this. I'm, I'm so, double, so check, I'm double checking yeah. the ISU website as we speak before we sign off here. I would yeah, like. Imagine, could you imagine if I did all that and it's not Jonathan, even. Jonathan, the, the comments would be. They would slit your throat. I know. I already I know. said that Picasso oh. was like attacking for a second. I'm already nervous about that. Amazing. Um, amazing. Well, and, yeah. Well, and my favorite is when people are like, oh, my plastic surgeon is a real artist or true Picasso. <laughs> I'm always like, let's just put your nose over here. Like, what, <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, so the panel of judges. Wait, Shinamano is not did listed I, for the short. Did I mess it up? It's I'm Deborah sure Islam, it. Ricardo Olivariata, and Evelyn Roshuki. Um, David Santi is the replay operator. Um Oh, so now I'm just spreading fake Wait, news. wait, wait. I'm looking at the panel. Because he's usually... No, Shinamano is the assistant tech- technical specialist in the men's. And Annette Poach is the... Uh, I want to meet Annette. She seems so funny. Annette, Annette seems really person. nice. She's she's a, like a very sweet Instagram. And she was great in that documentary. Now, David Santee gets to be the head data operator now. He was only the assist... He was only the replay operator in the other one. It seems like they, they switch those off. Um, okay, Shinamano, how is he assisting Annette? Don't you? I feel like he doesn't. I feel like he's bossy. Don't you think? Well, and yes, I feel like again he'll want to discredit more than she'll want to give benefit of the doubt to, right? Well, she was also with Utah. She may be a little bit of a stickler as well. I agree. I'm looking up Shinamano's um, competitive history right now. Oh, would you he like did. To... He did win a pair's um, national title in Japan. Uh, he was first place, and there were um, no other competitors. Right. And that was in 1997. 
Yes, that's probably so why he switched to Bears. He's yeah. an achiever. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, intriguing. I'm just being silly in like the same way Mary Lou Reef doesn't like Joe Inman because of the call against. <laughs> I know, but we love Mao. So, but yes, I love Mao and I love Satoko and leave them alone. By the <laughs> so, way, if you're the replay and the data operator, you have to do all four events. It's very. Oh, but that would be true. exhausting. Oh my goodness. The controller for the ice dance free dance is the um, somewhat scandalous uh, um, Helena Gordon Poltorek, who is supposed to be very controversial and more of a oh. Russian persuasion, even though she's Polish. And Svetlana Lyapina is the assistant technical specialist. This could be like Julian working overdrive. They could, they're they in... could be trying to mess up other people's momentums for worlds oh, when the Russians yes. aren't even there. Mm, I know. Could be an intriguing concept. Marie Bonus. I don't know anything about her, but um, I don't know if she's going to... That's a panel that is just... But if if you are Julian, let's, let's for a moment say that this is all possible. And Helene what... is apparently gorgeous. Apparently she's like gorgeous and deadly. Oh, I'll keep an eye out for her. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm curious what what kind of momentum would favor the Russians from this event. Okay, is if Hubble and Donahue got lose. buried. If Hubble and Donahue yeah. used lose to Piper and Paul, could you imagine? It would throw everything into disarray. Yeah, it would throw it to, into Desiree. Des <laughs> oh, you punny, you punny oh my queen. Gosh, the worst, the worst. <laughs> this was an off the hinges episode. For it me. should be. Sorry. Okay. It was going to be yesterday, then it was today. You know, people are going to be like, what happened? You said this would be up last night. Well, we don't have to watch the State of the Union, so. That's right. But Duke basketball is on. And I am supposed to be packing. What before. is with you and the Duke basketball? Is there a guy that you were talking to that got you into it? No, I'm just with, I'm staying in Philadelphia with these people that watch it. And I just kind of got really into it. And there's some guys that move really well. And I was like, see, you could go to Misham because you already move well. So are you talking about the Alexander method with their, uh, their <laughs> posture? <that you're> <laughs> no, they have good. Yeah. Me and the Alexander technique method. But of course I look like the letter C if you ever see me in person. So, so I don't know if you know this, but I'm very but, into, uh, coaching philosophy technique and i read a bunch of the phil jackson books about how he got the chicago bulls to get together i get to work was, together it was very this fascinating is not, we're now just off the tracks but um i i'm from chicago and we had tickets during those years oh. i went to all those playoff games you know what jonathan what didn't you go to in your stretch limo when you're going to skate america and um, <laughs> xanadu on ice okay uh it was now nice try it was Starlight Express of Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? Well, Patty doesn't I, I, like him. Okay. So anyway. Okay. Fair um, enough. But no, no, no football for me. No football for me. Although I did watch the Super Bowl. I event. didn't watch it. Wasn't that terrible? We the went game to Mike, was terrible. And Michael Shanley and I went to Michael McDonald's. We watched Spy with Melissa McCarthy. Much great better. film. Great film. Yes. I do, I'm not always a fan of her films, but that is an excellent film. And you know what? Would be surprisingly good Bond-esque music for someone to skate to. Mm. It's a great soundtrack. My favorite one of hers, obviously The Heat with Sandra Bullock, because... Uh, one of my least favorite. What? Yeah, I just don't like anything she's done except for Spy. This is... What is this now? This is just a... You don't like Sandra Bullock? I can't even... I didn't say that. I didn't say that. What do you have I against Sandra? The... I don't have anything... There's only one Sandra in my life, and her last name is Bezik. Listen. <laughs> what about... While you were sleeping, the proposal, all of the oh, I liked the proposal. I, 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 I don't have a thing against her. I just don't like the heat. I didn't think it was very good. Uh, but was, I thought Spy was very funny. The heat was amazing. I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. Miami heat? No, I'm just kidding. So can you watch Netflix on your flight? Because we do have a documentary that you need to watch. Oh, yes, I can. Do you want to be judgmental and shocked and horrified? Well, just you, this once. <laughs> you need to watch Abducted in Plain Sight, okay? We need to talk about that. As do okay. you in the comments. By the way, what's your opinion on Abducted in Plain Sight? Oh my gosh, we're still filming. <laughs> Jonathan, Amazing. the people need to know. It's a Tuesday. Yeah. It's the middle of the week. 
We're giving them a bonus episode on Russian juniors that we watched yeah. way too many of. We could talk about yeah. other topics, okay? Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I appreciate it. You have but never have even you... seen men on film, okay? So now- And you... now I am completely obsessed. <laughs> completely obsessed. I don't know how they got away with some of that then. <laughs> Glenn Close, oh, we love him. Oh, yes. That's a great line. That's uh, And all of the hair pieces, and it's just great, just great. Oh, man. So on that note, <laughs> on that note, I'm David Evans and I'm Antoine Merriweather. <laughs> Antoine Merriweather, absolutely. And we give it the angel wing snaps for the Costa Naya right. short. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Amazing. We'll work on it. We'll work Hold on it. Hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys.